Welcome to the channel. I am the Jamaican Scoop Diva. Now, the first thing that I will be discussing is the talk of Vibes Cartel's condition, which is life-threatening reportedly, and the desperate need he has for surgery. Now, dancehall star Vibes Cartel is reported to be in severe health condition, allegedly exacerbated by a 23-hour prison lockdown placed on the DJ following discovery of cell phones within his cell according to reports. An exclusive report, Fox 5 News, revealed that the Gaza DJ's condition is life-threatening and surgery is required. As per the report, a sworn medical affidavit from Vibes Cartel's private doctor, Karen, Karen Phillips, outlined that Cartel's Graves' disease and heart condition are getting worse and without surgery, he could possibly D.I.E. Now, in case you're wondering what Graves' disease is, it is an autoimmune disorder that can cause hypothyroidism and overactive thyroid. The thyroid is a small butterfly-shaped gland in the front of your neck. Thyroid hormones control the way your body uses energy, so they affect nearly every organ in your body, even the way your heart beats. So based off this, you know that this is quite serious. Isaac Buchanan, who serves as Cartel's legal representative, sat down for an interview with the North American News Channel where he revealed the medical condition of the entertainer and the state of his prison cell. He is in a cell and if you can picture a brick oven, because that's how the cells are built, the ventilation is next to none. Isaac Buchanan argued. As Buchanan continued the interview, he outlined how Cartel looked when he last saw him on Memorial Day by stating, his face is actually swollen and as I said, one of the things he always wear glasses because the condition causes his eyes to protrude. However, the medical report that Cartel's health was based on in the news story was done two months ago. They obtained from Cartel's private physician, Dr. Karen Phillips. The medical report details Cartel's seven-year history battling Graves' disease, other medical complications, and two heart diseases. According to report, Dr. Phillips recommends immediate surgery for Cartel. In the conclusion of his interview, Isaac Buchanan states that his harsh present um, present cell conditions will only deteriorate his health we do not want to get a phone call to say because he was under this 23 hour lockdown and unable to breathe that he succumbed to his illnesses Buchanan declared and this is actually from the Yard Hype website now when I watched this interview and I read the comments a lot of people are split now of course no regular minded human being with decent morals would like to see anyone suffer like this because they say his face is swollen his eyes are protruding and he's not doing well now we have to remember that first of all he's in prison and so if you're in prison it means that you were likely founded guilty of a crime now you have persons saying that but didn't he do whatever he did to lizard which is why he's, he's here a lot of people debate that you know he is allegedly a known criminal and sometimes this is what you get when you do crimes and you go behind bars and this is actually a punishment as they state from having cell phones which is a contraband in prison now a lot of persons are saying free world boss free world boss but the question is, does he deserve to be freed? Um, people are also saying that these kinds of treatments are intentionally and deliberately done to Vibes Cartel as, as he is not the only person in prison with contraband such as cell phones. But they're saying that this is a strategic, some persons are arguing that this is a strategic punishment done in an attempt to basically end his LIFE and so they're trying to quote-unquote get him out by any means necessary um you can tell me in the comments if you understand my underlining thing what I'm saying here so in other words he did a terrible crime he's been accused of doing many other crimes especially in the vicinity of Portmore and so people are saying this is one way that the system is using to get him out but his beloved fans are saying no we would like him to be free at least give him some medical attention give him some medical assistance because at the end of the day that i believe is his human right this evening regret and pain it's how the family of slain policeman constable damien blair feels after he was allegedly 
by his wife. It's a case of yet another domestic dispute turned into and one persons close to the couple believe could have been avoided with the right intervention. Shamela Pullen has more in this report. Residents of Somerset, Manchester have been left in shock following the gruesome police constable Damien Blair Monday evening. His wife allegedly shot him and used a hammer to inflict wounds to his head. Investigators recovered a firearm and two hammers from the scene. The woman is currently in hospital getting treatment for what is believed to be a self-inflicted wound. Constable Blair's sister, Antonia Sutherland, says there were signs the couple had a rocky relationship. They have been married for eight years. They've been having problems for years, years. The humble, you know? She also pointed to incidents of physical abuse. She's licking in her head with the pot a couple days ago. And then she licking in one coconut and bust up. She loves lick. She is a very high tempered person. Miss Sutherland says her brother had in fact expressed his intention to leave the union. They were going counseling because they were getting a divorce. And then she fell ill and admitted in the Mandeville Hospital and he take care of her. And he said, yeah, well, I'm not about a divorce, you know, because she just wants somebody to take care of her. So he started taking care of her again and everything, I think everything did all right. Miss shop. The family never anticipated that the seemingly never-ending dispute between the couple would have ended in tragedy. Just even a few days ago, he said, she said, I'm going to leave me now. Yeah, in other, in other family group, he takes him and she says she's going to kill But we don't know, 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 how would you first, she has to think like that. Yeah, she said every minute. But one thing, anytime she said not like that, him always, him tell the family. Yeah, tell the family. Oh, tell his family. Yeah, like, make she and her mother know. I think he got scared. He <laughs> called me and told me the other day, say, she has not been home for two days, and he don't know where she did, and he might wonder where she up to. Miss Sutherland described her brother as a quiet and ambitious man. He come to me right the other day, and we did it, and we talked. We talked for a whole long time, and she, he might tell me about And the killing, and he might go rent somewhere, and me and say, no. You know, I know if you put the chicken, you always have chicken. He's a very hustling young policeman. Very hustling. Now, moving on over to Manchester, I believe, to the most unfortunate incident that happened recently, I believe, yesterday. Now, a police officer who was married for eight years was M-U-R-D-E-R-E-D -E -E by his own wife. Now, this happened in a domestic violent attack no a lot of persons feel like a toxic relationship is something like a small feat it is not a toxic relationship can cost you your life and so many times we glamorize the toxicity of a relationship and think that oh it's exciting it's not and some of us may feel like only females can be a b u s e d by males but believe it or not, females can also be quite abusive. And here we have a man, a police officer, a civil servant, someone who is clearly able to defend himself, losing his L.I.F.E. to his wife, who attacked him. And based off what they're saying, she has done it before. She has always been very violent, very aggressive, and he chose to stay. But if you listen to the interview, he felt it. He was afraid. He was confided in his sister and he wanted to leave. He even planned on giving up his um, focal business and just renting someplace. I'm not aware whose house it was, but a lot of times people run and leave their own homes in an attempt to save their own lives. And it is most disheartening when we look at the life. The person who we sleep next to can be our greatest enemies. The persons who we care for the most is willing to take our L-I-V-E-S just like that. No, in the greater scheme of things, um, I, I realized that they said that she had self-inflicted STAB wounds and maybe that was an attempt to take her own LIFE or it was an attempt to make it feel as if or make it seem as if she was attacked by her husband. 
And I want to tell all of our gentlemen this, and our ladies, but specifically our gentlemen. We as men feel as if we are the man of the house. And sorry, we as men, I'm not a man, but men may feel as if they're the man of the house and they are indeed stronger physical beings than the females, usually. But don't take lightly when you see a female that is aggressive because they know that they're not physically able to match your strength. And so what they will do is to make up for their physical strength, they will use weapons. Some of these weapons are D-E-A-D-L-Y. Listen to me carefully. They're dangerous. And so they will use hammers. They will use knives. They will use G-U-N-S. This woman used her own husband's pistol to off him, to finish him. There's no one to, to tell his, his life is, that's it. There's, he was very ambitious. I'm not so aware if he had children, but that's it for him. And so I, I, I plead with you. I, I ask you, when you see someone that you love and you see someone that you would like to spend your time with or the rest of your life with, ask yourself, if this person is violent and abusive, ask yourself this question, is it worth your life? And if your answer is no, leave, especially if you have children to live for, relatives and other loved ones to live for. I ask you, I implore you to get out because your story could end up like this one. And I realize that these kinds of people don't have regard for life. But I am telling you, this one hits home for me personally. And so I had to speak about it. And so I'm asking you, I'm imploring you, take care of yourselves, love yourselves, care for yourselves. He said that he wanted to take care of her. That's why he stayed. He was planning to leave. But if only he had said to himself, listen, this lady has been violent time and time again. If she wants someone to take care of her, she should go find someone else to do that. So I just wanted to bring this to the forefront because a lot of times people even laugh at men who complain that women, A-B-U-S-E, them. And they say, oh, you should be strong. But no, this is serious. It's a game, not just a physical game, but it's also a mind game. It's a game of manipulation because these women know how to manipulate these men into having them stay with them and take their abuse. Sometimes it's like silent abuse. And so I just wanted to speak about this so that everyone, everyone who's listening to this can be mindful if you're going through something like this to go. Walk away. Walk away. Now, moving on to more positive news. Now, it is no secret about the current state of dancehall and the discussions that have been said regarding dancehall and the fact that it no longer stands where it was on the international scene. In other words, it has lost its footing and is kind of now declining in quality and in popularity. And I myself have spoken about that too in a quite a bit of my videos. Now, to prove this point... Something excellent happened. Now, Beyonce, the international superstar, which we have all come to know and love her music, is currently doing a renaissance tour. Now, in one of her performances, she performed to a song called Move. Now, in this song called Move, she performed to the actual song called Move Your Body by Nina Sky. And this song is also on her album and it is listed in her album tracking that it has elements of Move Your Body. Now, this song called Move Your Body was produced, the beat was produced by our very own Skata Burrell. And the song, the rhythm is called Cooley Dance. Now, this was a smash rhythm back in 2003, I believe. And every single song, 90% of the songs, if not all the songs, went international. It was an excellent um, rhythm and it actually put Skata Burrell on the map as an international 
produced and that's how I believe he made his name. And if you don't know Skatterbarrel to this day, he is still making a lot of moves as he is closely affiliated with Downtown Records and Downtown Entertainment, which you know is responsible for Sumfest, which, you know, Sumfest is July 16 to 22. Be there. Now, as it regards to this, this is what Skatterbarrel had to say. Great music can never be silenced. Respect to the queen of music at Beyonce, who chose music I own and created to be a part of her Renaissance World Tour. This adds to my many accolades I continue to garner from my works. I created this beat in 2002 with headphones on my MPC 2000 on a New York trip in my friend at Chaps Chaps Living Room in Yonkers. Now, when you look at it, and I'm not saying that current music is not being played or nowadays music is not being played on these kinds of levels but this happens ever so often and we're realizing that people like Sean Paul who is in his 50s or just about 50 years old people like Shaggy they are the ones who are much older who are still getting recognition from dancehall and reggae whilst the new artists are kind of like Yes, we know of them, but how much people know of them on the international scene? And this also is tied to a discussion that a producer by the name of Richie D. And this, there was a feature on a website by the name of Dancehall Mag. And what he was saying is that the number of rhythms produced over the decades spanning reggae and dancehall stands in the thousands, recording data shows. According to Richie D., this could catalyze the global redemption of dancehall music, especially when current generation artists, whom he describes to be incredibly talented, record songs on them. So what he's saying that the mere fact that rhythms like Cooley Dance, for example, is still trending, is still irrelevant, is still international, is still being used to perform on worldwide tours with the likes of Beyonce. That's a fact. Why not combine them in our nowadays struggling music, right, to make dancehall great again he continued to say we can evolve and do great things with our music even bigger than we've done in the past imagine if collectively we create we recreate dancehall feel and grooves and incorporate whatever new sounds styles and djs to them dancehall would be back and stronger than ever richie said now freddie mcgregor had this to say a real era of solid dancehall music was cemented by icons such as Sly and Robbie, Steely and Cleavy, Dave Kelly, Lenky Martin and Danny Brown, followed by younger standouts such as Don Carleone, his son Stephen the Genius McGregor, which is of course Freddie McGregor's son and a Russian. However, according to the big ship boss in recent times, there seems to have been a dearth, which means a depletion of preeminent producers, which has left him to wonder wh whether the dancehall or the creative musical juices have all dried up. Right now, we are suffering Right now, we are following the trend in the United States of America with this trap music thing. And what is really happening is that we are trapping ourselves with something that is not Jamaican. Are we lost? And this is the words of Freddie McGregor. If the creative juices are running low, then it is time to revert to what we have and even tweak it to be a little different. We can still create magic with what we have. And I do believe that it makes sense. Because when you look at the accomplishments and the level of success that the 90s and early 2000s dancehall artists and producers have received and you compare it to the, the level of success that the nowadays producers and artists are receiving, you will realize that the artists and the producers back then have accomplished way more international success and recognition and look at when you look at someone like, for example, Skeeter Burrell, who is basically telling you straight forward that great music can never be silenced. And he's still making a lot of successes, accomplishing a lot of successes. And he is now affiliated with the likes of Beyonce. That says a lot. That says a lot. How many of the young boys in dancehall now are accomplishing these kinds of things?
and how good is their music because you can't cheat quality and you cannot cheat sorry you can't cheat quantity and you can't cheat success and hard work now this is in no means bashing the dancehall artists of today but um because you know richard d did highlight um valiant even mad cabra went out to say valiant and a couple of others they're still doing good work but he would like just to keep the authenticity of it so that we can compete with the likes of afrobeat which wasn't even as big as it was today so afrobeat has really taken over from dancehall i would say and we can debate with this in the comments and so that's my piece um, this is the Jamaican Scoop Diva. Please like, share and subscribe. Please don't forget to hit the notification bell. Please leave your comment below and please take care of yourself.